Hello, this is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at how to calculate the volume of a cylinder. So uh, here we have a cylinder, and uh, a cylinder really is just something that has a circular bottom, a circular top, so it has that same shape throughout the whole entire height of the structure. It's kind of like a filled toilet paper roll. It's kind of like a uh, can of soda. Uh, so anything that has that kind of shape, uh, we would call it a cylinder. Okay, so let's say we were dealing with a cylinder, and let's say our cylinder had a height of 7 meters, and let's say we knew the radius, which is from the middle of the figure to a point on the end, we would call that the radius, let's say that is 5 meters. So I would like to calculate the volume of this. Well, first of all, to calculate the volume of a cylinder, you need to know the formula. So the formula is the area of the base times the height. Okay, that's the formula for a cylinder, and it's the same formula for a prism. So to calculate it, we need to know, well, what's the area of the base? Well, we said the area of the base is a circle. So if the area of the base is a circle, we know the area of a circle is pi r squared. We all know pi is the approximation. Uh, for pi, that is, is 3.14. And uh, we use that when we deal with problems that have pi in it as a great approximation. So our formula becomes area of the base, pi r squared, times the height, h. So that's the formula that we should use every time we're calculating the volume of a cylinder. Okay, let's do it for this problem. So when we calculate our volume, we're going to put in pi. Well, the approximation for pi is 3.14. We're going to take our radius, and in this case it's 5 meters, square it, and multiply it by the height, 7 meters. Okay, so we're going to multiply this all together. So this would be, let's see, 5 meters squared. Squaring that would be 25 meters squared times 7 meters. Because remember, meters times meters is meters squared. Times 3.14. So if we multiply all of that together, we're going to get 549. Point five, and of course that was let's see meters squared times meters, meters cubed. And it makes sense. Every uh, unit for volume should be cubic because it has a length, a width, and a height. So you had cubic. We're counting cubes for cylinders. Okay, so there you go. That is the volume of the cylinder. For our second problem, we're going to use the statement as a guide. We're going to calculate the volume of a cylinder whose height is twice the width. So we really don't have any specific information regarding this picture. All we do know is that we have a bunch of unknowns. Like, for instance, we don't know what the radius is. So I'm going to call the radius x. So we're going to say that the radius is unknown. It's x. Well, it turns out that if the radius is x, then that means the diameter, which is the total distance across, right? it has to always be twice what the radius is. So if the radius is x, the diameter then has to be 2x. And that's what we would think of as the width. That is really the width of the cylinder. Okay, so if our width of our cylinder, otherwise known as the diameter, is 2x, we're told that the height is twice the width. So this height is going to be twice that. So 2 times 2x is 4x, and that is our height. Okay, so now we have all these dimensions here, and of course that this uh, cylinder does not look like it uh, matches this problem. I mean, this is supposed to be twice as high as it is wide, but remember this is just a diagram that helps us organize the information. Okay, so just keep in mind that these statistics are what's important. So when we calculate the volume, we use the volume formula. We use the pi times the radius squared 
times the height. Okay, so what's our radius? Our radius is not 2x, that's the diameter, it's x. Okay, what's the height? The height is 4x. So what we're going to do is multiply all this information. Now you'll notice that I'm not plugging in pi. At least I'm not going to put in the value 3.14 for pi. I'm leaving it. And the reason is I don't have any numbers here to work with except this coefficient. So I'm going to be left with a variable expression anyway. So I might as well just leave pi in there as well. So uh, I'm leaving this in terms of pi. So x squared, or x times x, is x squared. And I've got to multiply that times 4x. So if I multiply that all together, I will get the volume. And the volume is, let's see, 4 times pi is 4 pi. And I get x squared times x, which is x cubed. All right, so it looks like, there you go. I've got my volume for this scenario. And it is a variable. We don't know what the radius is. That's why that's in there, and that's x. So for instance, if for some reason we knew, when we found out later on, that the radius, x, is 3 meters, I could then plug it in. I would say, okay, well, according to our formula, we're going to take 4 times pi times 3. Well, actually, let's leave that unit in there, 3 meters cubed. Okay, so you plug this all into a calculator, and of course, your calculator is going to spit out 339.12. And of course, meters cubed would be meters times meters times meters is meters cubed. And there you go. That would be the volume of this particular cylinder with a radius of 3 meters. Okay, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our interactive quizzes, other instructional videos and lessons. Take care.